Hi there, I am Mucha back for another gear review and today we're going to have a look to the Minilog XD by Korg. Welcome to my bits and bobs. The Minilog XD is a very versatile and powerful analog synth with full voice polyphony. It has three oscillators, two analog and one digital, with a mixer section here to set the volume of each one. It has an analog filter, two envelopes and one LFO which can be used in a single oscillator mode to act like a third envelope. Then everything goes to an effect section that allows you to layer three effects at the same time. One modulation effect, one reverb effect and one delay effect. You have a couple of secondary functions on these knobs with the shift button here. The keys are medium side and velocity sensitive. I am not a pianist originally, but they feel good to play. Then you can set the synth to play in polyphonic mode, in unison where the four voices play the same note, or in automatic chord mode where every note you play outputs a chord. On top of that you have an arpeggiator and a 16 step sequencer that can be polyphonic and that also allows you to record automation for up to four knobs. In this video we'll see all these sections in details and there is a lot to say so as always down below in the description you can find the timings to jump to any part of this review slash tutorial. And spoiler alert, it sounds amazing, it's awesome. But just before I get totally biased, how do the presets sound? The Minilog XD comes with 200 presets and you have another 300 slots to save your own. And I have the feeling that these slots can be filled pretty quickly, because that's just how versatile the thing is. So I think it's a good thing to have so many slots. When you load a preset, it will load the settings for all these knobs as they were in the preset. So if you want to hear it with the settings of the knobs as they are now, as you can see them on the front panel, you can press shift with the play button. <laughs> The synth in itself is pretty big with a curved black metal plate on the front and a wooden finish on the back which I think gives it a beautiful look. On the back the output is either a stereo jack or two mono jack left and right and it has an input to plug an expression pedal as well. I don't have any so I'll contest it but it sounds good to have. Then you have two CV inputs to control part of the synth with a modular system or another synth, sync in and out in mini jack format, MIDI in and out and then a USB plug to control the synth from your computer. And finally there's the button to turn it on next to the place to plug the power cable. Because it is an analog synth, when you turn it on it will have kind of a time of warm up for the tuning. And once it is turned on, one thing that is really cool is that every time you play a note the screen displays an oscilloscope to show the shape of the oscillator. It is a great way to see how turning the knobs affect the waveform. Okay, so now that it's on, I propose we build a patch that will take us through all these sections one by one to see how they work. The master section on the left hand side is where you can control the master volume of the synth and the tempo for the arpeggiator and the sequencer. Below, this switch allows you to transpose the keyboard octaves up and down and the portamento is the glide time between notes. The switch at the bottom is to select the voice mode between polyphonic, unison which is monophonic, chords to make chords automatically, or you can select the arpeggiator to repeat notes or arpeggiator chord you play. If you press the switch down again, this LED will blink and the arpeggiator will be latched. It is a hold function that will hold the keys you press so you can have the arpeggiator playing in loop and the two hands free to turn all the knobs. The knob just above will do different things depending on the voice mode you have selected. If you select polyphonic, it will be able to play four voices of polyphony. And if you turn this depth knob, it will become two voices of polyphony where the both lines are played by two oscillators. Turning the depth more to the right detunes each oscillator to have a thicker sound.
In unison mode, every oscillator will play the same note, and turning the depth knob also detune each oscillator for a thicker sound. In chord mode, the depth knob sets the type of chord that is played. You can see which chord on the screen. There's monophonic, fifth to play power chords, sus2 chord, minor, major, sus4, minor7, dominant7, seventh, seventh suspended4, major7, augmented, diminished, half diminished7, minor major 7th and diminished major 7th chord. That's quite a lot of chords and that can be cool to write some sequences. And finally, in the arpeggiator mode, the depth knob will set the pattern for the arpeggiator. There are two manual modes, two rise modes, two fall modes, two rise fall modes, two polyphonic modes to play chords, and three random patterns. For all the first algorithms, there are two versions, because the first will play the arpeggio only on one octave, and the second version will play it on two octaves. Here is the rise fall one, and here is the rise fall two. And for the polyphonic arpeggio, you simply have to speed for the rhythm of the chords you play. Over here you have three oscillators to generate sound, so one per line, and each one is linked to a volume knob uh, in front of them in the mixer section. The two first oscillators are analog oscillators, and the third one is digital. So let's see the two analog oscillators first. You will see the digital oscillator a little bit later, because it is a bit special. The two analog oscillators work in a very similar way. You can first select the waveform with the first switch, between sawtooth, triangle, and square wave. The shape knob over here will then change the tone of the oscillator in a way that depends on the waveform. If you choose a square waveform, it will be a pulse width. If you choose a triangle wave, it will be a waveform distortion that looks like a wavefold. And if you choose a sawtooth, it will mirror some parts of the waveform. It's easier to see on the oscilloscope than to explain. I think for our patch I will go for a sawtooth waveform on the oscillator 1 as it is richer in harmonics and a bit more aggressive. The second switch here transposes each oscillator to set on which octave they play, so you can have them up to 4 octaves apart. And to detune them further, you have the pitch knob that goes from minor 12 to plus 12 semitones. If you turn that pitch knob while holding the shift button there, it will detune the oscillator by semitone, so you can stick to notes of the scale. Detuning the oscillators is particularly fun with the sync switch that is here. When it is on, it will hard sync the phase of the oscillator 2 to the phase of the oscillator 1. So what does that mean? That means that every time the oscillator 1 begins a new cycle, it will force the oscillator 2 to begin a new cycle as well. So it can cut the waveform of the oscillator 2 in the middle, and you can hear the result of that uh, as a distortion. So it works particularly well when the two oscillators are detuned. So here is the oscillator 2 on its own, and if I hard sync it to the oscillator 1... You also have two other ways to distort the waveform in the oscillator section. You can activate the ring modulation with this switch. It will more or less use the oscillation of the oscillator 1 to modulate the volume of the oscillator 2. So that will happen very quickly and create a type of distortion that can sound very metallic. And lastly, you can use this cross mod depth knob to use the oscillation of the oscillator 1 to modulate the pitch of the oscillator 2. So we are here in the realm of FM synthesis, which is a distortion richer in harmonics than the ring modulation.
And what's interesting here is that you can use all three distortions at the same time and they all react to the pitch of the oscillators. Also, the result of these modulations will be on the oscillator too. So you can still layer this or not with the raw sound of the oscillator one in the mixer to have a thicker sound. And that's already a lot to try only with the oscillator section to create very complex sounds. So let's play with that and find something cool. Okay, I like that. It's a big rich tone so we can start to shape it down with the analog filter. The analog filter is a low pass filter that allows us to filter out the higher frequencies of our sound. The cutoff knob moves the point above which you want to cut the frequencies, so the more on the left, the more muffled the sound, and the resonance will boost more or less the frequencies at the cutoff point. So with the higher resonance, you can really make the synth whistle in a very interesting way. It's like every filter has its own sound, and I really like the sound of this one. To accentuate the effect of the resonance or to get a more aggressive sound, you can activate the drive on the filter. It can be either at 0%, 50% or 100%. And next to that, you can set the key follow also to either 0%, 50% or 100%. It will make the filter more open or high enough to have a more consistent sound across all octaves. And here I'm moving the filter myself, but imagine you can have that moving automatically with the envelope section. So let's see how to add motion with that now. In the envelope section, you have two envelopes and one LFO. The first envelope has an attack, decay, sustain and release like a regular envelope and it will control the amplitude of the oscillator so it will shape the volume contours of the sound. So you can make some plug or percussive sounds by lowering the attack and the sustain to zero and then play with the decay knob. Or you can make more of a violin-like sound with a longer attack and a higher sustain. So you can control the shape of the notes you play with this. So for our patch, I guess I will go for an attack and release at zero, so the notes will be played at full volume as soon as I hit a key and they will stop playing as soon as I release them. Then I will put the sustain all the way up so they will be played at full volume as long as I hold the key down. Below that you have a second envelope with only two parameters, a rise time and a fall time. And with the switch at the end of the line you can set if it controls the pitch of the oscillator 1, the pitch of the oscillator 2 or the cutoff of the filter. Controlling the pitch of the oscillator 1 or 2 are both very interesting with the sort of distortions we saw in the oscillator section, as they all work with the pitch. Ah. 
And lastly, this EG int knob sets the intensity of the modulation to tell how far you want to move the pitch or the cutoff point. The intensity 0 is actually in the middle, so it can go negative or positive, so it can move these values downward or upward. Below this second envelope you have an LFO which can control either the pitch of the oscillators, the shape knob of the oscillators or the cutoff of the filter. You can then change the waveform of this LFO with the first switch, it can be either a sawtooth, a triangle or a square wave. With the second switch, you can set if it is synced to the tempo, if it is in free run mode, or if it's in one shot. In one shot mode, it will play one cycle and then start, so it will act essentially like a small envelope generator. And the int knob sets the intensity of the modulation to set how far the LFO will move the parameter it is linked to. Little trick to remember, if you turn the int knob while holding the shift down, it will reverse the waveform of the LFO, so you can have a ramp up this way. <laughs> Little side note on the LFO, when it is linked to the pitch or the shape of the oscillators, you can choose which oscillator it will affect, and that happens in the menu. We'll see the menu more in detail at the end of this video, but just to show you, if you go to edit mode, then program edit, every button that blinks here will be a page. On the fourth page, you can set the LFO target, if you want it to be all the oscillators, if you want it to be only oscillators 1 and 2, only oscillator 2, or only the multi-engine, which is the digital oscillator. So for our patch, I guess I will go toward more dubstep -y sound with the LFO in a triangle shape that will alter the cutoff frequency on the filter. <laughs> And I'll set it to BPM so I will be able to automate the rate of this LFO so I can do different speed in the sequence. Then all this sound will go through the FX section, which is the top row here with the two switches and these two knobs. The FX section allows you to add up to three types of effects. With the first switch, you can either pick the modulation effect, the reverb or the delay. And to control them, you have a time knob and a depth knob. And when you are in the reverb or delays, you can access the dry wet by holding the shift button and turning the depth knob. Then for each category, you can cycle through the available effects by pushing the second switch all the way up. In the delay section, you have a stereo delay, a mono, ping pong, a delay with high pass or a delay with tape saturation and a one tap. Then all have a version that is synced to the BPM and there's a doubling effect. <laughs> In the reverbs, you have a hall, a smooth, arena, plate, room, early rev that have more transients, space that have some movement in it, riser that pitches up the echoes, submarine that pitches them down, and horror that is a bit more dissonant. <laughs> And in the modulation effects, you have a chorus, ensemble, a phaser, and a flanger. And what is crazy about this section is that these effects are actually filters containing a lot of variations for each of them. To cycle through the subcategories, you can hold the shift button and flip the switch up. And there are a lot of variations for it. For example, in the chorus effects, you have different strengths for the LFO, one with more overtone, or one with feedbacks, etc. <laughs> In the phasers, you have different speeds, one inspired by the 70s New York style, a formant effect, and one that sounds more sparkly. And finally, in the flanger, you have different strength, different sweeps, and one with three LFOs. So there's a really good amount of effects and they sound really good. And you can layer up to three effects at the same time, one per category, one modulation, one reverb and one delay. When you select them, you can set if you want them on or off with this second switch. 
Then if all of these effects are not enough, in the modulation section you also have a user effect. Because you can add up to 16 custom effects from your computer into the Minilog XZ and that is where you'll find your custom effects. More info about that at the end of the video. Right now I don't have any custom effects loaded in so that's why I don't have the user section uh, showing up here but that is where you will find it. To gain time I will add effects later on when we have a sequence to play with so now it's a good time to program that. It is a 16 step sequencer that you can control with the buttons at the bottom here and the buttons at the bottom right there. You have the play button to launch the sequence here, next to the record button to record notes. You can add notes step by step by pressing record when the sequence is not playing, play the notes one after the other to create your sequence. You can also play chords up to four voices or use the rest button to add silences. <laughs> Here this line of buttons represent the 16 steps of your sequence, so you can hold one and play a note to add that note to that step, and you can hold several steps at a time to add the same note to those steps, and if the steps follow each other, the notes will be linked, so it will make longer notes. <laughs> Also, when you hold the step button, you can turn the program value knob to set the gate time for that step. That allows you to make shorter or longer notes, and it's great to add groove to your loop. And you can still use the rest button to add pauses or delete notes in your sequence. And if you hold shift and press the rest button, it will erase all the sequences so you can start over. And when you press the record button while the sequence is playing, you will enter the live recording mode where every note you play will be added to the sequence. Or if you want to add silences or pauses in the middle of your sequence, you can deactivate some steps by just clicking one of these buttons. In addition to notes, you can also record movements of almost all the knobs and switches you see on the front panel. So you can add automations for up to four knobs at the same time. You record automation by pressing the motion mode here. There it says no motion data because I don't have any automation recorded yet. And then you hit record. You can do that either in live recording mode or in step by step. <laughs> In live recording mode, the sequence will record from one loop, starting when you begin to turn the knob or flip a switch, and then the recording will stop automatically. And when you are in motion mode, you can hold a step down and turn a knob to add a value just for that step. And there is actually a trick to make sequences sound like they are longer to 16 steps with the automations, because 16 steps can feel a bit short sometimes. The trick is that you can automate the switch of the play mode. So you can turn the tempo down to go on half tempo and then use the arpeggiator on some steps to play several notes on those steps. So I will turn the tempo down. So let's say I want to have the arpeggiator on this step, then on this one, on the last one, and maybe on this one. <laughs> And in the same fashion that for notes, when you are in motion mode, you can deactivate some step to deactivate the automation there. So now that we have four tracks of automation, if we try to record some automation for a fifth knob, the minilog will say motion full and will ask which track of automation we want to delete to record the new one. If you want to delete manually the automations for one knob, you have to go in the menu. So let's see how it works now. In the Minilog XD, the menu is called Edit Mode and you can open it with this Edit Mode button. In the Edit Mode, you have three chapters and you can select the chapter you want by clicking again on the Edit Mode button or with the Program Value knob. The Program Edit is for the settings of the patch, like its name, or the target of the LFO we saw in the section about the LFO. The Sequence Edit is for all the settings relative to the sequence and the Global Settings is for the global settings, like detuning the whole synth, setting the MIDI channels or brightness of the screens, this kind of stuff. 
When you enter each of these main parts, you will have different sets of buttons lit up above the keyboard. There can be several settings on each button, so you can cycle through them by pressing several times the same button. And if you hold shift while clicking on these buttons, you will cycle back in the other way, so you can cycle back and forth. For example, to erase our automation tracks, it's in the sequence edit chapter. Here the buttons on the left are for the notes and the buttons on the right are for the automations. So what we are looking for is on the first page on the motion side, and this screen is the screen we saw when the mini log asked uh, which automation track we wanted to delete. So to select the track we want, we have to click on that button again, and then turn the program value knob, it will ask if you want to clear, and you will hit right to confirm. Before you delete an automation track, you can check how they look by holding the shift button, so you can see the automations there. So there are three chapters with a lot of pages and settings to explore, but to make it easier, there is a very useful table in the manual to see all the settings at once. For example, you can see in the sequence chapter, in the second page, that you can change the length of the sequence or change the resolution. So you can use that instead of lowering the tempo to do the tricks to make longer sequences. That's also where you can add some swings to your sequence. And in the program setting, on the first page, you have the settings for the joystick that is just here that we haven't talked about yet. The joystick acts like a pitch bend on the x-axis from left to right. And on the y-axis, up and down, you can set it to control different parameters. So you can have an effect when you push the joystick up and another effect when you push the joystick down. You can set the effect you want to assign from the program menu on the first page. The third parameter is to set an effect when you push the joystick up. And with the fifth parameter, you can set another effect when you push the joystick down. So you can assign a lot of things. You can assign the gate time, the portamento, the pitch and the shape of both oscillators, the cross mod, which is the FM knob, the shape of the digital oscillator, the multi-engine, the level, so the volume of any oscillator, the cutoff and resonance of the filter, the attack, decay, sustain and release of the first envelope that acts on the volume of the synth, the attack, decay or intensity of the second envelope, the LFO rate, the LFO intensity, the time and depth of the modulation effect, the reverb time and reverb depth, the delay time or the delay depth. So let's assign the LFO rate for our wobble. <laughs> In the list of parameters, you can also see in the program section that you have a lot of settings for the multi-engine, which is the digital oscillator that we haven't explored yet. So several parameters of this oscillator are accessible from the menu, and that's why I've kept it for now. With everything we've seen, you already have a super complete synth with amazing sounds, but the multi-engine adds a whole world of sound you couldn't do with only analog oscillators. So the multi-engine have three positions with this switch. You have white noise, VPM, which is the modulated oscillator with a carrier and a modulator, and you have user section to add even more custom oscillators. You have a total of 16 slots to add your own oscillators. For each section, you can change the algorithm used with the type knob here, and you can modify the sound you selected with the shape knob. Its function will change depending on the algorithm you selected, and some algorithms even have a second parameter to change when you hold the shape knob at the same time. For the noise, you have white noise with different filters. So you have one with a high pass, one with a low pass filter, one with a peak filter, or with a decimator, which is like a bit crusher. The shape knob will move the cutoff of the filters. And with the decimate, it will change the sample rate. With the decimate, you can also adjust the key tracking if you hold the shift button while you turn the shape knob. It will adjust the depth of the sample rate relatively to the note you play. With the VPM, you have different waveforms for both the carrier, the main oscillator, and the modulator, the oscillator that will modify the first one. You have sine waves for the carrier with more and more harmonics brought by the modulator the more you cycle through the algorithms. You have so tooth and square waveforms with two variations for each. You have two fat algorithms that will emphasize the lower harmonics, two air algorithms that use white noise to add kind of a breathy tone, two decay algorithms with more modulation at the beginning of the sound than at the end, so you'll have kind of a delay time on the modulation, and algorithms that are called creep and throat that are a bit more dissonant but have more movement to them. 
For all those algorithms, you can modify the depth of the modulation with the shape knob, or you can hold shift at the same time so you can change the pitch ratio between the two oscillators, carrier and modulator, so they can play on the same octave or be one or two octaves apart. So there's a huge variety of sound to create with that already. For all these algorithms, you can access even more parameters from the menu we saw earlier. This is in the program edits, and then it's the last button of this row. In there, for example, you can change the feedback amount, or you can change the attack and delay for the decay algorithm. And when you set the multi-engine to user, you can cycle through the algorithm you have imported with the type knob. And you always have two parameters you can control directly from the front panel, with the shape knob or with the shift button plus the shape knob. But you often have more parameters to see in this menu, so it's always worth checking when you're using the multi-engine. For example, by default, in the user oscillator, you have one called Waves. It consists of two wavetable oscillators. You can explore both with the shape knob or by holding the shift button at the same time. And it has one sub oscillator. The sub can be used for ring modulation and it has kind of a bit crusher at the end of the chain if you want to make it in a lo-fi tone. A lot of these options are accessible from the menu. So if you use only the knobs on the front panel with it, you will miss a lot of its potential. And the beauty of that all is that of course you can layer everything the multi engine can do with the analog oscillators with the mixer section. You can set the volume of each channel there to blend them together, and from the menu, having the possibility to have the LFO to affect only one oscillator, two of them, or all of them, allows you to create multi timbral sounds with several layers moving differently, which is awesome. <laughs> Now, before we go to the conclusion, I would like to quickly show you how to import custom effects and oscillator, because that adds a lot of potential to the synth. I don't have the abilities to program my own oscillators, so I will try an algorithm called Macro Resonator by Peter Alwyn. It is actually based on Mutable Instruments module elements, so I will leave a link in the description to both Mutable Instruments page and Peter Alwyn's user oscillator if you want to download it. So to transfer that into the Minilog XD from your computer, you will need to connect them with a USB cable and download two things. Korg's MIDI driver, so your computer can see the Minilog XD, and Korg software Sound Librarian to transfer the files. So you download them, install both, and then launch the Sound Librarian software. You will see different tabs to store your preset, custom oscillators and effects, and from there you can drop in either oscillator, effects or preset files directly from your browser. Then select them and send them to the Minilog XD by clicking on the right button. So now, if you disconnect the USB cable, you should find the new oscillator in the multi-engine in the user slot. Okay, so now we have seen pretty much all the functions of the Minilog XD, so what do we think of it? Please let me know in the comments what you think about this machine. When I first tried it, I was really amazed by the sound. When exploring the different sounds I could make by turning all the knobs, I had a lot of whoa moments. <laughs> the sound of the oscillators, the sound of the filter, I just love them. And the digital oscillator also sound very good. I used a little less the multi-engine, first because there is already a lot of things to do with all you have above, including the sync, ring modulation and FM modulation, but also because there are a lot of settings in the menu, and when I am in the sound, I don't necessarily think to dive into that. The structure of the synth is pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, so it's easier to use and you don't easily get lost, but you still have a huge variety of sounds to discover. Basses, leads, pads, effects, it's very versatile, and the multi-engine adds a lot to that versatility. The ability to import new oscillators and new effects is excellent. That means that you can add things you may feel misses from the Minilog XD, and it ensures the Minilog XD to stay modern and adaptive. If there is an effect or type of sound synthesis you use a lot in your genre, you may be able to add it to the synth. Like the filter is only low pass, and sometimes I would have liked to have a high pass filter, or another type of filter. But thanks to the user effects, you can import that. For example, there is a pack of different filters you can buy made by Dirtbox Synth. I may not want to buy that now, but it's nice to know it's possible. The sequencer is only 16 step long, which can feel a bit short, but you can always have the tricks with the arpeggiator to make longer sequences. 
process. It is not optimal, not ideal, but it works. And I always love when you can add automations to a sequence. And here four of them give a lot of possibilities to add movements. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you watched all the way through, you're awesome. That's a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't hesitate to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, sharing it to a friend is the best way to do that. Take care, be well, and I'll see you next time.